Right now, we are coming up on one of my favorite seasons of the year. In February here, besides the fact that it's my birthday, it also is the season of love. And what we have to think about when we're thinking about really progressing our relationship forward is what is our relationship with ourself? How do we view ourselves? How do we think about ourselves? And the important place to start with is how do we think about our body? So if you're one of those people who wants to see your relationship flourish, not just with your partner, but also inside yourself, this podcast is going to be for you. Hey, we're Britt and Chris Carmichael, and you're listening to the Elevated Life Podcast. Throughout the 13 years we've been together, we've never ceased in our endless quest to better ourselves. We've studied top experts, philosophers, and gurus. After years of personal self-experimentation, we found the tools for shifting your beliefs, moving through fears, and developing a positive mindset. If you're ready for a breakthrough, then you're in the right place because we're here to empower you to take control of your life with simple mindset shifts that create radical transformation. We'll be diving into topics like personal growth, health, philosophy, spirituality, relationships, success, and mindfulness. So create some space for yourself and get comfy. It's time to become the badass you were born to be. Well, this is probably going to be a triggering topic to everyone listening because we all have bodies. Golly, and, and how we treat our bodies, not only with the physical things that we do, but the way we think about ourselves, the way we speak about ourselves, the way we describe ourselves, the way we tell other people about us is so important. The way important. we treat ourselves. It's so important to how you actually end up living the rest of your life. It's so important to take a moment to ask yourself, what is my relationship with my body? Do I love it? Do I appreciate it? Do I hate it? Do I want to change it? Take a moment. Or two. But if you're anything like me, you're probably pretty comfortable with that inner story that you tell yourself. And mine was, and, and yours might be different, but it's it, the, the thing in common will be that it's negative. My inner mean girl story was, I'm fat, I'm fat. What I didn't know is that when I was eight years old, my uncle had called me Brickney as a joke. I was a little heavier. I was a tall, I was a really tall child. And so when he picked me up, he made this joke like I was heavy. And after doing therapy work with Chris in the hypnosis, I went back to that eight-year-old inner child and asked her, what happened? Why, you know, why do you not love yourself? And it's because she was imprinted with this idea that she was fat. And, be, and if she's fat, then she must be unlovable. And that was a story she told herself. And in that moment, in that hypnosis session, I finally let go of decades worth of self-hate talk of the way that I treated my body, of the way that I punished myself, the way that I withheld things or, or even rewarded myself from the thing I'm trying to avoid. I was in a really bad relationship with my body, not to mention hashtag me too issues. So if you have issues with your body, know that you're not alone. And this really is going to be that time for you to reflect and rediscover and reconnect. You know, it's interesting when we're so young, you know, you have to think, I'm just figuring things out, some things out now. You know, I'm kind of barely scratching the surface with with how life works Every and what's going on. Every mushroom trip reveals a new topic. And, and you just you just have to think like, what what was your mental aptitude, or how much did you really understand when you're into that six years old, eight years old, ten years like in that range? Think about how much you didn't understand yet. I mean, if you were to talk to a, a seven or eight year old, their level of understanding would be much different than where your life is. And we get imprinted with these ideas about what skinny means or fat means or strong means or girly means or, or all the like manly or stuff masculine. means. Yeah, we we get so bombarded by those kind of messages and we end up sort of building our personality and then building our lifestyle and our habits based on what people are telling us around then. And it's really important if you have these kind of issues and really almost every single other issue is to go back and think to yourself of like, where did this start from? A lot of times we just look at symptoms. You know, we just look at how are we feeling? Do we feel worried? Do we have a lot of worried thoughts? Are we feeling anxious? Do we get depressed? Do we screw up in relationships? We, we, we see those things that are more of symptoms and we don't go back earlier in time and think about like, well, where did this begin? When I start telling myself the story, why did my story change? 
what was the authority figure who was there or who was the person that I trusted in that moment who said a piece of information or gave me a thought and that thought was really sort of a mind virus and it infected me and it made me believe these things and now I've been acting that out. And so how do I go back and change that? Because what I'm realizing, the more we work with people and the more of a variety we get, especially people all around the world, different sexes, different everything, different backgrounds, you start to realize that, see, because I thought body images were things that mainly women had. You know, I thought because you're presented with that a lot of times and come to find out that's that's not true at all. Men feel this way all the time, including myself to some degree at different stages of my life. And it's really important to remember that we are all sort of going through this. And so the more that we can help each other and the more that we can be empathetic to other people's stories and situations, the more we'll start to understand that we it's not this lonely place. I was going to say, it's not your fault. I mean, yeah. media has been lying to saying, don't get naked. You'll get arrested if you show your nipple, like hashtag free the nipple, everyone. But like, let's advertise to you with all this sex, all these body things. Like now you're starting to see the shift in narrative where there's all different types of bodies being portrayed um, as models, which is a beautiful movement and change that I'm so grateful like to be a part of this progressive um, transformation, but it's not your fault. Culture and marketing, hello, has done this to us. Yeah, it's, it's heavy. It's heavy. And so the first thing you really want to start doing, you say, hey, this is something I have an issue with. And again, we love you. You're beautiful. <laughs> yes. It's, and, you know, it's not Brit's story just because she was saying I'm fat. It's not like a fat shaming thing. That is what someone imprinted on her and what she associated with negative and bad at the time. Because think about it. As a kid, if you're a little bit heavier, people can call you. They say, hey, hey, fatty. I mean, I know I was I hit puberty late. And so, like, I didn't spring up. I didn't and gain my height until way late for me. And so I was kind of a fat kid for a long I mean, time. The doctor, and it was fine. The yeah. doctor literally, tell them that story about the doctor. Yeah, the, the doctor that my mom was working for at the time, who was my, my general practitioner guy, who I loved. He was, a, he was a super amazing dude. Real manly, though, masculine guy, doctor, right? And I, I'm, I'm sitting there, and he asked me to come over there and get, do a push-up. And I, 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 he says, like, you know, you, you need to figure out, like, where you're at physically. So he, he goes, show me, do me, do a push-up right here. And I got down on, on my, you know, in a push-up position, in an office as a little kid and could not do it. I was heavy, you know, I didn't have a lot of strength. And he laughed at me. And it's amazing because like, I'm one of those people now that I, I need workouts in my life, but did I knew, do I need them because of that? For a long time, that was definitely the case. I had to prove to myself that I was strong enough. I had to prove, but it's just a young imprint. It's just something that happens to us. And so just remember that a lot of times your habits and things like that are just something that has happened to you. Someone did something, it made you feel a certain way at the time because you didn't understand it. You were a child or teenager or in a hurt space. And so you took in that information in the wrong mental state because normally you would say, I reject that. I'm awesome. Forget about this stuff. But at that time you didn't, you, it, you were open. And so it just, it slipped by the security guards that are normally there taking care of your mind and you, you accept that in there. And so you're, you're just doing it. And so just remember that we're in this boat. And so the first thing that you have to start doing is you have to start monitoring, this is exactly what Brittany did, you have to start monitoring your self-talk. It has to be at the forefront of every single thing that you do. The second that you speak a word in your head, which is how you make stories in your life and why, what you live by, when you start to speak those stories in your head, you've got to listen to what you're saying. And you've got to realize that if you're not saying things that are helpful, are true, are supportive, you're going to have to figure out a way to silence them. That's going to be one of the most important things you do in your entire life. If you can silence even a portion of those negative messages, think about how much better you feel half the rest of the day. I mean, you feel amazing. It's because you're not bombarding yourself with messages that don't support your growth or support your career or support what you're doing with your family or with your mission in life or whatever you feel your purpose is. It's powerful. It's powerful what you're saying inside your own head. Yeah, you are only as strong as your self-talk. And so when you do this review, I get, in Shine School, I teach the Shine Schoolers to review a 24-hour period. So starting from this moment now, check the clock. Okay. Now for 24 hours, I want you to do a mental review. Be mindful. Listen to the stories that you tell yourself inside your head. See if they're negative. See if they're positive. See if they're complaining. See if they're observing. See if they're helpful. See if they're creative. See if they're loving. Take a moment and do this challenge for yourself because that ultimate awareness, I mean, we've talked about this before on the podcast, awareness equals enlightenment, right? Total saturation and love, only being able to like absorb the good within the bad. And let me tell you where you're going to mess this up. Here's where most people mess this up. 
is that you start doing a self-talk exercise. You start wanting to be more positive for yourself, at least inside your own mind, to start there. And what most people will do is they'll realize that they have a, a lot of negative self-talk. And that's most of us start to realize that once we start listening a little bit. We're like, oh, man, I'm really saying that all the time. And I'm just saying it out loud, too. The problem is what ends up happening is that most people begin to feel guilty about it. It's that I shouldn't be doing this to myself. And so what happens, it continues the feedback loop. I shouldn't be doing this. Now I get frustrated. Then I get angry. Then I repeat the same things. Then I feel guilty about it. And then I go back in the loop again. And so what you want to do instead is this is like is an awareness exercise. So you're only jotting down and you're only noticing. You're not giving any kind of ex extra thought to it. You're not, you're not putting your value or your judgment on what you're doing to yourself. You're just having an awareness about it. That way it doesn't move you more or less either direction because you don't care about that yet. You only care about being aware of it so that you can see that. Am I only saying this sometimes? Am I only saying it when I do these certain things? So you start to discover your triggers a little bit. You say, am I doing this? What's what, like, how consistently am I saying this? Is it every single day? Is it every single morning? Like how often is it Putting happening? Putting on clothes was definitely a trigger for me. And so that's one of the times where you know, you, okay, I've got to be aware now. And so when you're going to the closet or when you're picking up the clothes off the ground or whatever, and you can say to yourself, okay, I need to be hyper aware. So I don't let those things flood into me. So instead you can start to override it. And like start pepping yourself up. Like I'm amazing. I can't wait to pick out my beautiful outfit for today to showcase and express and represent who I am and like my loving spirit. Like that's such a different way to approach getting ready than, oh, I have nothing that fits. I hate everything. Blah, 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 blah. And I live that. I live that for way too long. And it feels so much better to make that shift. And it, I thought it felt weird for the longest time. I'm like, oh, who says I'm beautiful? Like, oh, like that feels strange. It's like people actually taking care of themselves first. Like guilt always seems to be an issue, right? So we feel weird. We feel uncomfortable when we start to make these changes. But what I can say is in time and having thousands of shine schoolers go through the program, I can tell you without a doubt, if you give yourself this consistent practice in time, it will become so natural and normal that you'll only notice when you're PMSing because that's the one like time where you're like, okay, things are going crazy and the rest of your life really is a smooth flow of loving energy it takes time it certainly does it takes practice but it is possible yeah so get on that self-talk start to monitor it start to figure out where you're at with it so that you can sort of just become your own bestie you really can <laughs> i mean it, it sounds so cheesy but that really is what happens and, it, and it's phenomenal what people can do when they support themselves you know for one you stop looking out to other people so much to do it for you so you're not trying to get them to fill the sort of empty hole because you're not doing it yourself this puts you back in control you back in power and you start to feel really good so let's talk about the second thing you want to make sure that because if you've beaten up your body mentally for a long time, or even physically, if you've done that too, if you've beaten your body up, you have defined it in a certain way. So what now you need to do is reconnect your body with pleasure. So if you've been disliking your body, if you've been telling it bad things about itself, if you've been kind of misusing it, mistreating it, putting a bunch of chemicals in it that you don't need to be doing, whether that be in terms of food or drugs or, or smoking or, or whatever it is, it's time to take a pause and get back to realizing that your body, not only does it keep you alive in, tr in tremendous ways, but it is a massive conduit for pleasure, especially if you're going to find another partner to be intimate with. I just had this like semi-random rem like reminding thought of what I had experienced with like the transfer of negative energy when you talk bad about yourself. I had a client in my chair who was very blonde and I'm known for healthy, long lasting, beautiful blondes, right? And she would come back and one side of her hair would just like be all torched up. Like what is happening? Like everything else is fine. It's beautiful. Like what's going on? And we went through months. This was like multiple appointments of like, what products are you using? What's your routine in and out of the shower? How do you style your hair? What products are you using? Like the full combing of the detail. Well, what type of product, like what type of iron are you curling your hair? I started like, I was Inspector Gadget over there trying to figure out like Blue's Clues vibe, you know? And it finally, cause like when you ask the question, the answer will appear if you're patient and willing to go through it. And finally, one day I figured it out. We're sitting in the chair. I'd put her color on and someone from her work had called and she's talking on the phone. And while she's talking on the phone, she's grabbing the left side of her hair and twirling it around like a fucking helicopter which is the cause of the breakage. And I, then it clicked. I was like, she's transferring the stress and anxiety from the phone call into her hair. 
And that, that was it. We figured it out. We, you have to redirect the energy, right? If it's an unconscious habit or pattern, you've got to figure out how to break that and, and choose a new action, which luckily for her, I'm not just a hairstylist. So I was able to help her do that, but you have to become aware first. Like we didn't know we spent months like questioning all the other shit that matters, but wasn't the contributor to the and, problem. And that's just goes goes to show you again. Sometimes it's not big things. Sometimes it's small things over time that have just worn you down. And once you can find out that you're going to laugh at yourself, the best part about this process is you end up just, you're like, I spent how long with this? I mean, what? And, and it can, it can get you in that, when you're in that laughing state and when you can kid with yourself and be like, I can, what? And you just, you feel like a dodo for a moment. And it's all, it's fine to feel like that. Like that's totally natural, especially when you make big, big, weird mistakes, but it teaches you, it teaches you to start being aware. It teaches you to start being focused on new things. I'm going to get back to this idea of reconnecting your body with pleasure. And so what I want you to start doing is a self-pleasuring in some way. I was just thinking rub one out. <laughs> yes, but it doesn't always have the, the idea. The, the problem most people have with this, just like they had a problem with the first one. The second one you're going to end up having a problem with is the idea of this is not to reach an orgasm. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about building pleasure about your body, not just building pleasure. Those are two different things. And so you want to start to manipulate your body, touch, whatever it is for you, gently and continuously, and not trying to reach a certain goal. The only goal is for you to begin to love yourself. And if going straight downtown is like, whoa, I'm just like not there yet, like start with like giving yourself a hug. We taught this in the Elevated Life Club one time where you give yourself a hug and you rub your arms up and down, like, you know, like caressing your, what is this, your triceps or whatever. It actually releases chemical endorphins in your mind that create like a loving, nurturing experience. So you really can give yourself that love that you're seeking outside of yourself. That is ineffective. It's weird to think, all right, right now, just real quick, just do it. Let's do it all together. Oh, actually, I want to breathe. Take a big, wrap your arms around yourself, wrap your arms, and just take a big breath. Close your eyes down. Close your eyes down. Just settle for a second and do this, do this. Big breath in. And just let everything go for a minute. Now just squeeze yourself tight. And just feel that. You can put more love, emotion behind it if you want to. You can say to yourself, I love you. You can do things like that. And just notice how good it feels. And then just, just drop it and let it go for a moment. And just, look, look, are you feeling better? It's a simple hug. So this doesn't have to be something complicated. It doesn't have to be super overtly sexual. It can be very simple. The idea is just to do it. And if you're not up to where you want to walk in the mirror first and take all your clothes off and do those exercises that are very, very powerful. But if you're not ready for them, turn the lights off when you get in the bed. Do it in the shadows. It's fine. Just start doing it. Like, don't make anything as an excuse as, well, I do, you know, it's tough for me right there. And of course it's tough. So what? It doesn't mean it won't be rewarding. So make sure you're doing, you can take baby steps. Baby steps are perfect steps, always perfect steps. Oh, consistency over time. You, you would never believe, like think about water building out a river through a mountain, you know, that's consistency over time. And you've got time. Oh, I love it. All right. The last tip we'll leave you with is to appreciate your body by doing something physically challenging. When we joined CrossFit in 2012, it was so far be and I'm an athletic, I'm an athletic, okay? I played like 10 sports growing up. I'm kind of a badass that you guys don't know about. So Secret Life of Brit, all-star athlete. I joined CrossFit and I'm like, holy heavens, I am like at the bottom of the totem pole here, which I loved. I loved being a newbie and a beginner. I'll never forget. We were, we had practiced a little bit of the CrossFit stuff at home, at our home gym. And we finally decided we really were lacking community. And when we joined CrossFit, Chris was like, the only thing I can't do. And he's power lifted. He's done all the things. He's like, the only thing I can't do is cartwheels, (laughs) cartwheels. The first day of CrossFit guess what our warm-up is? Cartwheels across the parking lot. And so it challenged us to use our body in ways that we had never been able to do before. And because of that, I remember falling in love with, at first I resisted. I didn't want to go. I'm so sore. I'm tired. What? Are, this is crazy. But I started to realize that I was way stronger and more capable of doing things that I had never believed possible before. And that translated into my life and my business. When I started doing challenging things with my body, when I first got my first pull up, (laughs) I felt like that's when I hit six figures. You know, it was like crazy correlations between challenging my body, learning to appreciate it and thank it for what it does. And, you know, for what it is, problems and all, you know, falling in love with it and finding that it's your, you, there's an upper limit 
or there's not, I, I, maybe you've put a limit on yourself, but there's something beyond that. That allows you to appreciate your body in ways that you become so accustomed to because it runs on autopilot. Yeah, we're not running away so much from, you know, tigers and lions anymore. There's just, there's just not that many. And so we've, we've all been cities for too long and we've forgotten how much it is that our body supports us. The only reason why you're alive right now is because of your body. Without that thing, you are gone. And so often what we end up finding when we do these challenging things, and it can be a hike for you. It can be maybe you do some rock climbing. It can maybe just be a walk. But it needs to be something where you're, where you're huffing and puffing a little bit for you, where you just stretch yourself outside your limits and you start to realize, oh, man, the, look at the way my, my, I'm gasping for air here. I feel my heart pounding in my chest. And you start to remember like the, the alive feeling starts rushing back to you. And you come to a place where you're like, I totally appreciate you. You've been doing so much for me, no matter what I've been doing, no matter what I've been saying. And so you really start to realize the most important thing is that you have not had an issue with your body ever. You've always had an issue with the way you were thinking. Say it again. You have not had an issue with your body. You have only had an issue with the way you were thinking. Because when you discover that even immense large challenges, your body can step up to the plate and deliver whether you help it, whether you try to resist, it doesn't matter. Your, your body will come to for your survival. And so to put it in challenging situations, I'm not talking about dangerous. I'm talking about challenging where you're like, man, this is going to be tough. You start to realize like, hell, the four flights of stairs going up and down to taking the dog out is challenging. It's challenging. Like, come on. And, and let yourself... <laughs> but we take the stairs instead of the elevator every time. You just let yourself breathe that way. And so you get back into that body. You start to say, man, I love this thing. Look at what's doing for me. Look at all this cool stuff that it's doing. I can do these things. I can be physically out there in the world and I can do incredible stuff that I would not even dreamed about. That's because your body's doing it. And so you got to get out of your own way in your own mind. Remember, plenty of good self-talk. Everything is going to start there. And that's love and appreciation that you're doing. You want to reconnect your body with pleasure so that you forget about the things that you hated about it and start to remember like th this is a conduit for pleasure this this is a way for me to feel good so not only is it protecting me making me secure not only am i going to be physically challenging it but i can use it to feel good you can produce those excellent oxytocin chemical chemicals you can produce serotonin you can produce dopamine all by yourself just by giving yourself a little love I mean, <laughs> love drugs yeah maybe it's a hug for you maybe it's more than that go for it get to it and if you really want to go deep on this topic we are teaching a live masterclass this month all about self-love where we will go extremely deep into body image. We're going to be doing a massive release meditation so that you can begin to see your body actually different. But beyond that, we also are going to talk about how you're thinking. We're going to talk about what are those things that you've been saying to yourself that you need to release and what's that new story you're going to rewrite and we're going to help you do that all live. So if that's something you're interested in, Britt's going to tell you where you can go to find it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you can find it at theelevatedlifeclub.com. Once you become an elevator, you join as a member, you'll get access to our on-demand vault of content. There's over 50 masterclasses. This is our fifth year in action, Carmichael, inside the club. We've been sharing our wisdom for the last five years from topics to, from success to spirituality. I mean, we really do cover it all, like health, wealth, all the things. So if you're looking for that accountability, the live group coaching, yoga and meditation practices, and really for a place to plug into a community, that's what we were looking for when we joined CrossFit, was a community of like-minded people so we could grow together. Yeah, because face it, you need regular challenges, and not just physical ones. You need mental challenges. You need stuff that pushes you outside of your boundaries, stuff that makes you realize, I can do this, so that you stop doubting yourself, so you come into life full force, and you really do start to seize that day. So if that's something for you, if you do want to go deeper on this topic, if this is something you're like, you know what, let's get some uh, handling on this. Let's, this. If we conquer this thing right here this year, we could go after those goals that we wanted. We can manifest a lot more. We could feel better and do bigger things in our life. If that's for you, Come join us. And hey, we do a monthly challenge every single month inside the club where we challenge you to do things, whether physical, mental, or reassessing in your life that are going to challenge you in ways to grow. So this is the perfect place. If you're looking for more, if you're re ready to elevate, then come join us.
You really do deserve to be your own bestie. And I hope this podcast inspired you to reconnect with your body. If you loved it, please tag us on Instagram, share it, take a screenshot, and most importantly, review it below. And we appreciate your support. Until then, we'll catch you later. Peace. Peace. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Elevated Life Podcast. Want more? Join us at theelevatedlifeclub.com for mindset upgrades, lifestyle hacks, and spiritual tools to elevate your soul. Each month features a new masterclass, meditation, yoga practice, and more to help you transform your life one step at a time. Come join the 7 or Above Club.